What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. The vendors of today are literally leaving money on the table. It seems like a lot of them have forgotten one simple trick that can end up making so much of a difference when they're buying, selling, and trading cards. This is from my own personal playbook. I bought, sold, and traded cards as my primary source of income for eight years of my life. That's how I know so much with Market Watch and have the insight that I do. So when I look through here, I just see money left behind by even personal friends. Friends. Let's go ahead and get into it. So when we go through here, YBM is somebody that I know. They help me get case ratios when sets are released and they're deep into the game. They're selling Crystal Bond at $28.95 to be competitive among other top rated sellers and the lowest listings to try to make that sale. Crystal Bond probably doesn't have the greatest sale rate. I think only two sold on eBay within the last month when I'm looking at it. So of course they want to go ahead and yeet it out of their collection. Enter my simple trick. I go over to a buy list. Trollandtoad.com is a great example. I've worked with them for years. This actually is not an ad at all. They're not paying for it or anything. And they've got some other tricks to use in a second. But I go over and the ease of use with them is insane. I can just type in Crystal Bond to go ahead and check what I can make. And wow, 28, 25. That's very, very close, isn't it? But wait, for just that 70 cents extra that I'm losing, well, selling on TCG Player has fees. 10 to 13% depending on your seller rating and how much. And this card is over $20, which means the seller is likely using tracked shipping in a bubble mailer, which is somewhere around the 350 mark, depending on what kind of shipping you're using for tracked shipping. That kind of hurts, doesn't it, to lose that 10%, which is almost $3, and then $3 again. And you could just create an entire buy list, consolidate your shipping, and end up winning huge in other places. You don't like this example enough? How about where money's literally left on the table? A lot of people might have ordered the advent calendar for their stores thinking it would do well, or hoping that some kind of special single would truly end up in there and we do get curry bowl but it's not selling for a lot now is it i see 379 you know under four dollars by multiple sellers this guy's got 21 of them i go over to the buy list on troll and toad they're literally paying more and you don't take any fees you only have to ship it to them all in one order if i'm this guy right here and game heroes and I have one person buy a place at another person buy a place at another person buy a place that I'm paying shipping on that one and that one and that one instead of sending the order all to one place for those three play sets. I'm paying extra shipping to multiple places where I could just be winning out and getting everything from one vendor. There's a reason why sites like Troll and Toad exist and do so well. They get their own market bubble from their longtime consumers and they end up selling completely out of cards that they're gonna need more of and we get this funny look where troll and toad could just look over at tcg player and go oh i could save a couple of pennies and also the sellers over on tcg player have this disconnect where they go oh i could have ended up making even more money on my cards now Again, there is a point to building up feedback, but these are already top-rated sellers. You can build feedback to lessen up your fees, climb up the ranks of TCG Player, and become a higher-level store, which makes sense. So maybe there is a reason to try to make these sales over here, but when I look at this, this is money left on the table on a, on a card that you didn't even need to be having. If you were ripping open the advent calendars, it probably should have been after they went on clearance and you bought them for $5 later on. <laughs> but I digress. This is literally money left on the table. Now there's another trick with Troll and Toad specifically that I like to use. Black Friday's coming up and they're famously one of the stores that I do shout out of. around Black Friday. I use their sale personally and I bought many many things even some of my own items back when I used to vend such as a uh, YCS top cut playmat that was uh, the blood mephist mat a one-time playmat so when I look through here there's a 25% bonus whenever you're selling so not only could you like put a card like crystal bond at a really good price you can get a store credit 
bump up that's good on all of their sellers. If you don't know Troll and Toad, they have what's called Evo Merchants, and they sell multiple things. I look over here, and there's a big opportunity to make some money off of this bump up as well, and just start getting back into stonks. We look at the cheapest trading card games is on their site. We have multiple Evo Merchants here selling some different Savage Strike Sealed product, and the special editions are at $90. Now, that's still a lot of money, but for what Savage Strike Special Editions are on TCG Player, that's a lot cheaper. Enter the store credit bonus, and we're going to get a 25% boost, essentially making, when we look at Savage Strike over here, well, that, that $90 is going to get discounted, right? So we're only going to be spending at a rate of 0.75, basically. We're looking at $67.50 on cards we traded in that we were getting more on already. Doesn't this sound like a win-win? We're looking at, well, shipping is bulkier on this, buying this for $67.50, and then being able to come back over here and relist it. At $125, I'm beating everybody, and then taking my shipping and fees, I'm still double winning, getting my feedback over on TCG Player, making a bigger sale, making bigger profit, and really making my money move for me. Yet, this is just all left on the table. There's this insane chunk of Savage Strike Special Editions. Last time I looked at this, there was 30, now there are 26. So, some people may have caught on here. I'm sorry if I'm giving away your tips and tricks, but this is from my own personal playbook. We also see the $100 Savage Strike Sealed First Edition Booster Box. Sorry, no Prismatic. It's a little bit old of a set, but 160 It's already 60% less than any box. And you're talking about the 25% trade-in bonus? So, you could be getting these boxes at essentially $75. Yet, they're again, left on the table. They're, Troll's not even bothering to list these because they're Evo merchants. They're people that are selling through Troll and Toad, putting it up and waiting for it to sell as they're the cheapest on Troll. Because Troll's Evo merchant system is like TCG Player, where you're able to sell through them, except... You, you ship it into Troll and Toad. That's what these Evo merchants are. They're people who have shipped their items into Troll and Toad, and they're going to ship out from Troll and Toad, yet store credit works on them also. I've confirmed with one of their top sales consultants to make sure before this video. It's, it's really interesting. And also, there's competitive cards that are cheaper than TCG Player at times. Nibiru is cheaper than Nibiru over here for a near mint. It's relatively cheaper and if you get that 25 percent split back in when you're looking for cards like these that you might think will go up over time or say you need a boral sword for your deck and you had that store credit under 10 freaking dollars from cheapest here when we look at 1085 lowest for a near mint a seller with under 95 of them there's reasons to shop there's this kind of mentality that troll and toads usually more expensive yet when i say always check both with eBay and TCG Player, you really should be looking all around. There's, again, a reason why independent sites exist, why they are so strong, why Tier 0 beats people at pre-sales because they're calling the market and they're not overly greedy, why Troll and Toad has these multiple sellers that they're actually willing to undercut themselves by three cents and let these people come in and sell so that they keep cards in stock. Like, there's this competitive market rising throughout vendors where you have multiple people selling under a major brand name at the same time. That's basically what TCG Player is. They're creating their own competition to it. So again, I'd look around. I would use this one simple trick to not be losing money when I'm selling. It's, it's crazy to me that top-rated sellers aren't looking around at this. I am paranoid. I always want to get the best percent for what I'm doing whenever I'm buying, selling, and trading. And this is a much more efficient system. I'm getting paid fast from Troll and Toad. I'm shipping in all the one source. I'm not dealing with multiple sellers that can go, oh yeah, I didn't get my card, man. Uh, yeah, did you, did you have the tracking number for this $5 order? Really, really, dude, it got lost. I've never lost a package, period. My Patreons can attest to that. So it, you don't deal with issues like that either when you're buy listing, and you're probably building up a buy list big enough to use trap shipping to somebody like Troll and Toad, Core TCG. There's multiple places to shop out there. This is just my best example of a competitive buy list, a competitive site that I really have personally used for my own. But let me know what you guys think in your own experience, perhaps with buy list. I find that Troll has amazing and customer service and typically other vendors do but i have heard stories of like oh something got reprinted and it got canceled i've heard those stories from some sites but i would go with somebody that has amazing customer service when i'm looking around and not dealing with the headache of 
wow, didn't get my card, or, oh man, there's, there's a ding that happened when it, you know you shipped it out, and those are the worst things as sellers that you guys gotta deal with, so I just find all of this flabbergasting that there's literally public prices that are higher than top rated sellers are leaving on the table and then considering the fees as well but like i said i understand if you're building that feedback let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below how many of you guys have used buy list and how regularly do you use them please subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoy these more white out discussions on the market where people might not have thought to look around and like the video if you enjoyed the discussion thank you for watching everybody